it's freezing. It's so cold, even Olaf hasn't melted. It is very, very cold. Hi everyone, it's not really cold, it's just me, being silly. First of all, let's get rid of the gloves. Oh, second, let's get, it's me, can you see? There we go, let's get rid of the scarf. Let's get rid of the coat. Oh, that's better. Back to normal. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new set of Vimeos. And these Vimeos, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully will prepare you for your coming exam on the Cold War. See what I did there. We're almost identical twins. Can you see? It's the same nose. I know. It's superb. Anyway, the Cold War. Now, first of all, what was the Cold War? It's not a fight in a very cold country. Not at all. Hopefully you should know. It was the name given to relations between USA and USSR from round about the end of World War II, 1945, right the way through to about 1989, 1990, 1991. So we've got about 45 years when the two superpowers, America and USSR, America is capitalist, USSR is communist, hopefully you know what those words mean, if not, check your book or ask your teacher, where these two superpowers they did not actually fight against each other directly, but they opposed each other. There was confrontation, there was conflict, there were arguments, and many of these were based on weapons, the arms race. So, that's the Cold War. Now, to go right to the start of the Cold War, we have to mention another war, World War II. Now, of course, in World War II, America and the USSR found themselves on the same side. How could that be, I hear you ask? Yes, indeed. They both had a common enemy in the Nazis of Hitler's Germany. So the two superpowers, who had not been that friendly in the 1930s, joined together to try to defeat Hitler's Nazis. And we're starting about 1941, 1942, 1943. Hitler has invaded the USSR, possibly the biggest mistake he made in World War II. So the two superpowers joined together in what was sometimes called the Grand Alliance. Now, as the war developed, Second World War, these two superpowers said, we need to have some meetings to plan a how to win the war and b what will happen to the world afterwards so they hold three meetings you will have done some work on this in your lesson the three conferences now we have three men here they are president of america president roosevelt hello i'm the american president Leader of the USSR. Hello, my name's Joseph Stalin, leader of the USSR. I've got a great moustache. And the third main leader. Hello, my name's Winston Churchill, leader of Great Britain. I've got a great hat. So these three men, they are the three main characters at the conferences. First one was held in Tehran. Great pronunciation. Capital city of Iran, 1943. Churchill, Stalin, Roosevelt get together and they try to come up with some agreements. Now at first, Stalin was angry because the Russian Red Army had been fighting the German army for about, getting on for about two years. America and Britain were still planning to come into Europe. They had not yet attacked. 
They didn't attack until the 6th of June, 1944, D-Day. Now, Stalin believed that America and Britain were holding back, hoping that the communist forces would be crushed and weakened. So he's keen for America and Britain to get involved. Churchill says, well, we don't want to go in there. We'll go in through the Balkans, down near countries like Yugoslavia and Greece and round there. Now, Stalin doesn't like that because Stalin said, no, you only want to go in there to stop the spread of communism, which was possibly true. Roosevelt decides to agree with Stalin. And Roosevelt says, no, we will attack in Western Europe, which they did when they landed on the beaches of Normandy. Also at Tehran, they do come up with some agreements. They say, look, when Germany is defeated, USSR, you can declare war on Japan and help America. They say, Poland, there's a country we need to look at. Poland, when World War II is over, Poland can have land from Germany, but then give land to the USSR. So that was the first meeting. On the whole, quite positive although there was this argument about when America and Britain were going to attack. Tehran, conference number one, reasonably successful. Conference two, Yalta, February 1945. Same three men, Stalin, Roosevelt, Churchill. At this time, however, though, Roosevelt... Quite an ill man, and sadly he died a few months later. But he was at Yalta. What happened at Yalta? Again, some agreements. Remember, Stalin's a bit happier. D-Day, June 1944, America and Britain had attacked in France. So that was able to help Russia, who had been attacked by the Germans in the east. So now the German army is being attacked from both sides. So Stalin was pleased about that. He was pleased that Roosevelt had kept his promise. Some agreements. Number one, the Nazi party would be banned. Nazi criminals would be put on trial after the war. That was agreed. It was agreed that Germany should be reduced in size, have a smaller army, pay reparations. A little bit like World War I there. It was agreed that there should be a replacement for the League of Nations, and this was going to be called the United Nations, the UN. It was also agreed that Poland would come under the USSR sphere of influence. Now, there's a phrase for you, spheres of influence. Basically, these three leaders were beginning to almost divide Europe into two. And the capitalist, America, Britain, would control Western Europe or have some influence over that area. And the Russians, the USSR, the communists, would control Eastern Europe and have some influence over those areas. And it was suggested that Poland should be in the USSR sphere of influence. Now, they agreed to divide Germany. So there was some success at Yalta. But, history is always full of buts, ladies and gentlemen, there were some tensions. All sides agreed, let's work together for democracy. Now, you might think that's good, they're all agreeing. Olaf agrees, yes, it's good. Thank you, Olaf. But, here's the key question. What does democracy mean? Did it mean the same to all of the different countries? Well, to our friend Joseph Stalin, democracy meant communism, the state, one party. To our friend Roosevelt and Churchill, democracy meant free elections, many political parties. So they're both saying let's improve democracy, but their idea of democracy was different. Can you see that that might cause trouble a little bit in the future? So we move to the third, we move to the third and final conference. Some people suggest
yes, maybe the most important. You have a think about that. And the third conference was at Potsdam, July and August 1945. World War II in Europe was over. Hitler was dead. The Germans have surrendered. Now, what else had changed? Well, Roosevelt had died. He was replaced by a new American president, President Truman. Hello, I'm the new American president, President Truman. Thank you, President Truman. So, at the third conference, Churchill, he lost the election. He was replaced by a new prime minister, Clemens Attlee. So at this Potsdam conference, we still got Stalin, but we've got a new president, Truman, and we've got a new prime minister, Attlee. The relationships had changed. Maybe that's important. Well, what else had changed? Well, Hitler was gone. The common enemy which had set up the Grand Alliance had gone. Maybe America and USSR are going to start dividing again. Also, Truman was sat there knowing that he had an atom bomb, fully tested and ready to go. So maybe he's a bit bossy because he knows that Stalin and the USSR have not got the bomb. So Potsdam was different. Now then, there was some agreement again. Good. A council of foreign ministers will be set up to help rebuild Europe. That's good. Nazi criminals were going to be put on trial at a place called Nuremberg, the Nuremberg trial. That was good. There was agreement. They divided to... Divided. I apologise. I'm almost a poet and I know it and I want to show it. They decided, not divided, they decided to divide Germany into four areas, four zones. And they also decided to divide Berlin, the capital, into four zones. USSR, American, British, French. They're the four zones for you. So there was some agreement, but at Potsdam there was quite a bit of disagreement. The Russians in particular wanted to punish Germany. They wanted a lot of reparations. America, on the other hand, wanted to rebuild Germany. So there's a division there. Russia, of course, had suffered far more than America in the war. So maybe that's why they wanted more reparations. So there's one area of division. How could they get round that? Well, what they did is they said, look, you rule your own little zone of Germany. So Russia, if you want to take reparations from your zone, do it. America, you don't want as much reparation from your zone, don't take it. Now you might think that's good, but of course, Russia had the poorest part of Germany. Therefore, can they take all of the reparations? No, because the richer part of Germany was over in American and British hands. So there is a problem there. Remember, Truman knows about the atom bomb. So he's being a little bit bossy, possibly arrogant. This is annoying Stalin. Stalin says, look, the Red Army, the Russians, we did all the fighting for four years. And now you've only just fought for a year and you're telling us what to do. Disagreement. Stalin and Roosevelt had been good friends. They built a good relationship. But Roosevelt was dead. Stalin and Truman, Truman were not as close. Divisions. They were also arguing about Poland. Remember I said in the past they'd agreed what to do with Poland. Now, America said, fair enough, you can have it in your sphere of influence, but the Polish government has to have some communists and some capitalists. That's what we've agreed. Stalin broke his promise here. He said, no, it's just communists. This annoyed America. So what we see, as World War II ends in Europe, as they have to decide what to do next, the old enemies, USA and USSR, start to divide. 
And as they divide, the Cold War begins. So, ladies and gentlemen, that sets the scene, the three conferences leading to getting ready for the Cold War. When we get to Vimeo 2, we'll have a look at how that Cold War actually started. Speak to you soon. Me and Ola saying goodbye. Cheers now.